Hi, my name is Suraj Pai and in this module, I'll be talking about Introduction to Classification. Let's talk about the problem of classification in machine learning. Classification is an interesting and applicable problem because it lets us differentiate between different classes in our data. Instead of predicting a real-valued output like we did in regression, we just predict which class a certain sample belongs to. Before we dive into some specific algorithms for classification, let's spend a few minutes going over the kinds of problems we'll be solving. We'll start off by getting a feel for what classification entails and some good examples of when to use and not to use classification. We'll finish up with a brief overview of popular classification problems and some data sets for you to start messing with classification on your own. Classification answers the simple question of what kind of data is this? Instead of predicting some real-valued output for each sample, our classification models will pick from a set of discrete class labels. In a supervised learning context, we have a set of labels for the model to choose from, and some examples of what data from each label looks like. Our models then learn to differentiate between these classes based on our examples. Classification can also be applied in an unsupervised learning context. For example, the problem of clustering in which we give our model all of our data and tell it to pick out the different groups in that data. In this chapter, we'll focus on the supervised learning applications of the classification problem. Classification and regression are fundamentally different types of problems, and it's important to be able to differentiate between the two. First of all, in classification problems, you are by definition picking a label from a discrete set of classes. So, if I want to classify what a picture is of, that would be a classification problem. I have a set of objects that I know about, and my model will pick one of them when I give it an image. Another important characteristic of classification is that you can't really be more or less wrong. You can try to optimize the confidence in your predictions, but a misclassification is a misclassification. That's different than regression problems, in which you try to make your output variable as close as final, as close as possible to the true output. In classification, it's all or nothing. Finally, you need to have samples from each class you want to be able to classify. Unlike regression, classification models won't be able to generalize the new classes they've never seen before. So you need to have some data for each class you want to learn. ImageNet is perhaps one of the most famous classification problems that researchers try to tackle. ImageNet has tens of thousands of classes, each with over 1000 images. As you can imagine, Learning to differentiate between that many classes with that much data is quite challenging. But we'll be taking a look at the kinds of models that have gotten impressive results on this data set. Another example of classification is the use of it to classify cancer tumors as either malignant or benign. Many years ago, the University of Wisconsin-Madison published a breast cancer data set that is one of the most popular for classification algorithms online. The figures on the right show what it may be able to do, the linear separations between tumors that are not cancerous and tumors that are cancerous, depending on corresponding values of variables, and using that function to discriminate and make predictions on new data. Some basic model, is in, some basic model information is included here. As discussed, the targeted outputs should belong to discrete classes, for example, just a 0 or a 1. This is binary classification. In binary classification, a class of 1 is represented as the truth of the variable. For example, if y represents a tumor being cancerous, 1 means that it is, and a 0 means that it is not. However, we need not simply have binary classification. In the image recognition example, we can predict and classify between many different classes. The output of the model will usually be a probability or will be a group of values that corresponds to a probability distribution. Usually, we say that if the predicted probability is at least half, we can treat this as predicted to be part of the truth class. Else, we predict it to be part of the false class. Though there are now constraints on the outputs of the data, no such constraints exist on the input and the weights. Both can take on any real number, and the ultimate goal of the algorithm is to map these real inputs into some sort of discrete and concrete classification.
And that concludes our video. This course was created as a part of the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative, the world's first massive online open coursework developed entirely by an online community. If you'd like to learn more about us or view more courses, visit crowdcourse.stanford.edu.